What's up guys, I'm here to tell you about the ultimate vlogging setup. If you've been following along with our adventures, this content is going to be a little bit different than what we normally put out, but if you're new to this channel, I'm Aaron, and my wife Hayden and I sold everything we owned in 2016, bought an RV, and have been traveling the United States for three years. So over the years, we've recorded on a number of different devices, a GoPro Hero 4, a GoPro 5, our iPhones, and even a Sony point-and-shoot camera before we finally upgraded to the Sony A6400. And one of the reasons that we love this camera so much is it's in the Sony mirrorless line, which reduces a lot of the weight in the camera. And that's a good thing when you're filming constantly, you're holding it out in front of you, uh, because anything heavy is going to fatigue your arm. So some of the things that we love about the Sony A6400 is it comes with the Sony E-mount lenses, so you can mount any of Sony's main lenses on here. It has the reversible screen, which allows you to see if you're in the shot, if you're in focus, and make sure that the shot is composed the, the way you want it. Uh, there's some complications with that, which we'll get into in just a moment. It also has the microphone input, which allows you to attach an external mic. So one of the things we realized immediately is as soon as we mounted our microphone to the top hot shoe, it completely blocks the screen. And that renders one of the best features completely useless. So in order to beat that, we picked up a small rig hot shoe adapter. And what that does is it actually moves the shoe over to the other side and allows us to mount the microphone on the left side. We highly recommend mounting it on that side because then you can plug in directly into the microphone port and you don't have to run the cable across the body of the camera. It's extremely well constructed, really lightweight. It's not a cheap plastic ring and it's fairly cheap. You can get it for about 20 bucks. The next piece you absolutely have to invest in is the Rode Mini Mic. The Rode Mini Mic is extremely low profile, but captures fantastic sound. And it makes a world of difference because the built-in microphone on the camera, while it's okay, it definitely picks up a lot of extra noise. So this will help concentrate your sound right on your subject. And we'll show you some of the differences with and without the microphone plugged in. My name's Aaron, and in 2016, my wife Hayden and I sold everything we owned to travel the U.S. in an RV. My name's Aaron, and in 2016, my wife Hayden and I sold everything we owned to travel the U.S. in an RV. The next piece we picked up was the Ziyun Weeble Lab, which is a fairly lightweight and compact gimbal that really removes all of the shakiness out of your shots. So here I am walking with the camera on the gimbal, walking at a pretty decent pace, and you can see that it's pretty smooth. So now here I am walking at that same pace, holding it just in my hand, no gimbal. And I can tell you right now that it is bumpy. The thing we like most about this gimbal is it's actually lighter than most of the other ones. And when you're talking about holding it out in front of you with a camera attached for any length of time, the less weight you have, the better it's going to be. But it also comes with this nice quick release system that allows you to quickly put the camera on and off if you need to make any sort of adjustments or you want to just take this off and shoot with your camera as normal. And there's a whole list of steps that you have to perform when you first pick this up to calibrate it with your camera, with the lens, all of the equipment that you have on there. It's really important that you do the calibration and do it right. Uh, and maybe we'll do a video about that in the future. So I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to put the camera right onto the ZU and Weeble Lab. So on the bottom of the camera is this plate that you'll attach and it go, screws into where the tripod mount is and then there's a little resting plate that rests on the edge of your lens. And you'll notice there's two little cutouts in here and that corresponds with the two little marks on the quick release plate. So in order to do this, the first thing you do is you unscrew this so that you can push this button in, press that in, line up the two and then you should be able to let go and just screw that in. And now it's attached and ready to go. Now it's time to unlock all the axis and turn it on. So the first thing I'll do is unlock everything. And now you should be able to spin in multiple different directions, back and forth, forward and backwards, side to side. But because it's not on, none of the motors are running, you have full range of motion right now. So I'll go ahead and pick it up, turn it on. And now all the motors are running. I should be able to do this, this, forward, backward. And you'll notice that the camera is extremely stable the entire time. 
So there's some really cool features that you get with this. You know, being vloggers, one of the things that we do is we'll be out filming and then we wanna to talk to the camera. There's a trigger in the front that you can click three times and it'll flip the camera around. And now you can talk to the camera, say whatever you need to say, and then do the same thing again and it'll flip back in the direction that it was in. If you get a little bit off kilter and you wanna just recenter things, double tap that button and it'll refocus and recenter up front. But probably one of the coolest features about this is the tripod comes off really easily and then you can attach it up here, lock it in, and now you can hold it in what's called underslung mode. And this allows you to get really low to the ground, get those really cool shots where you're coming in and you lift up and you expose the landscape or the view or whatever it is that you're doing. There's a whole slew of other features on here that we don't really use. Uh, there's something called a vortex mode, which will spin your camera in 360 degree circles, give you this kind of cool vortexy shot, um, but it's a little nauseating for us, so we don't really tend to use that one. But you, right now it's in pan follow mode. So as you see, as I turn it back and forth, the camera moves along with it. But if I lock it, no matter how I turn, the camera is going to stay facing in the same direction that it was in. So you can really lock in on your subject and move around, but still keep them right in the shot. So the links to all the pieces of equipment that we've talked about here will be in the description down below. Thanks for watching. And if you like what we're doing here, hit that like button. And if you're new here and you wanna follow along with our adventures, we put out a video every week. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and tap that bell icon so you get a notification every time we release a new video. Thanks for watching.